In his opening statement, Rizal appeals to the vanity of the audience. He flatters them, and as a result, their mindset conforms to what the speaker, Rizal, claims to be true. Next, Rizal makes his point, genius has no country. Race has nothing to do with one's abilities. The Spanish and the Filipinos are equal. At the time, the Philippines was under Spanish rule. Saying these things, therefore, was a great act of bravery, as Rizal could have been branded a filibuster for his words. Hence it becomes clearer why he felt the need to appeal to the audience in his opening statement. He then suggests that Philippine achievement is no longer confined within its own territory. Bearing in mind that he is speaking to the Filipino community in Madrid, praising two Filipino artists who have won acclaim in Madrid for their work, Rizal's meaning is self-evident. Rizal acknowledges, however, that such talent has not come to maturity without help. The Philippines supplied the stones, Europe has polished them. One cannot do without the other. Spain's contribution to Philippine achievement is undeniable. Next, Rizal talks about the spoliarium. Historically, a spoliarium is a chamber beneath the Roman arena where they disposed of dead bodies. Rizal claims that the canvas of this spoliarium is not mute, suggesting an auditory aspect of the painting, which is literally cast in shadow. This shadow contains portrayals of the suffering, slavery and oppression, reminiscent of what was happening in the Philippines under Spanish rule at the time. And then Rizal turns to Hidalgo's painting. In English, Virgenes Cristianas expressed as al populacho means Christian virgins exposed to the populace. Two women, with barely any clothes on, are Christian slaves. They are being mocked and tormented by male onlookers. Rizal refers to them as victims of brute force. Talking about the two paintings now, Rizal points out how both of them spark great nationalism. Next, being a writer himself, Rizal uses the pen as a metaphor, referring to the means by which he came to his country's aid. He then points to the palette and the brush, both instruments of the artist, as equally powerful advocates to the cause. And then he acknowledges the advantages of being a colony, despite all the horrors and tribulations that come with it. He likens Spain to a mother who teaches her language to her children. The ability to speak this language has opened doors for the Filipinos, allowing them to thrive and learn from other nations and thereby further themselves as well as their country. Rizal now proceeds to honor Spain. He claims that Spain does not refer merely to the country itself, but more importantly, to everything that holds its beneficent influence. Finally, he gives the toast, first, to the artists Luna and Hidalgo, second, to the people who have helped them, third, to the Filipino youth, that they may imitate such an example, fourth, to Mother Spain, and lastly, to the parents of those who make their country proud.